Welcome to the Purpose Walk podcast again, brought to you by the Mango Girl and Simply Naturals, as well as Royal Thread. My name is Dr. Ava Eagle Brown, and I'm your host. And here every week, we really just bring on very authentic, genuine, unedited human beings who have gone through pain and they have recycled their pain to purpose. Today is no different. We're joined by Sally and Saint. And before I even literally talk to her about who she is in the world, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. Sally Ann Saint is a healer, coach, and writer. She's passionate about sharing all she has learned to inspire others. Having experienced abuse, bullying, a miscarriage, and more, she openly shares her path of healing and processing the wounds to live an authentic life. Sally has just self-published her first book and can be contacted on her website sally www.sallysaint that's s-a-i-n-t um, s-a s-a-i-n-t dot c-o dot u-k and all the notes are going to be in the bottom of the podcast wow sally welcome to the podcast thank you very much for having me it's an honor I'm so excited as I, as I read your bio, which is so nice and snappy and so to the point, I, I can't help but identifying the similarities. I'm an author. I, I work with authors as well, but also I've been through abuse. I've been through miscarriage. Um, how do you, the first thing I noticed when you came onto the podcast um, was that you were very chirpy and you were very excited and you were very full of life. How do yeah. you go through so much? and still have that pizzazz about you? Because I was gifted with something deep inside me that supported me and there has always been something along the way that's helped and inspired me. And it's the truth. Um, my, my, my challenges go back from childhood. My mother and father, where my mother was sexually abused, my father was physically abused as kids with no processing done at all. But they were broken adults. They had as children. And because there was no processing people came into the house that should never be there it was not a safe home for stuff they loved it. they loved me they loved all of all of us but it just meant what was the most unhealthy felt normal because that's what we were around you know it was as simple as that so going out into the world that was my base so i was bullied at school um relationships were unhealthy um and so i went out into the world with all that data and it's like this is normal mm. you this is you accept this and then when i was 16 i became ill and developed something called me myalgia and careful wow. and it was the first time i started to question because because i was so ill and because there was nothing the medical profession could do i went into healing complementary therapies and they helped me but also they showed me a different way because then i understood that I wanted to learn these. And so I trained when I became better. I became a Reiki master, trained in Reiki, massage, reflexology. These were all the things that helped me when I was poorly. And then along the way, my Reiki teacher um, invited me to go on some shamanic workshops with her. Um, I'd always been drawn to Native American traditions. As a kid, I was just drawn to Native Americans, to animals. I dream of animals. And when she said about this retreat, I thought, yeah, I'm going. And it was, it started, there were four um, retreats a year on the equinoxes and solstices, but what they showed me was how to process because when you're there, you go straight in and they go, whoosh, and out it came. So from somebody who was, who had numbed her background completely because there was so much, so much, I was numb. I relate to that totally. And then it was the first retreat was heaven because it was so gentle. I felt at home. All the other people there had been coming for a long time. So they were a strong group. I just felt I fitted in. And so it's phenomenal. Then the next one was when um, the miscarriage came out, the pain of my miscarriage, which I buried, buried so deep. And in amongst the ceremonies and the things that we did here, the teachers said we were going to find our authentic voice. And we went out into the fields individually, you go. And I found this little dingle and it was down and there was a little brook below and I put my feet in this brook and I howled and I screamed and I couldn't, I couldn't speak afterwards, but this absolute distraught feeling. And then eventually when we were doing the, in the circle talking, it came through, it was a miscarriage and I buried it. Wow. Buried it. Let me just, I want to pause there 
just to dissect that yeah. because you said that and something in me just felt emotional um as somebody myself who'd been sexually abused by so many people in my life my dad was the first one who abused me and then it became my stepbrother and then it became my step uncle and then it was my uncle's friend there was so much abuse um as yeah. somebody who has never had um the opportunity to process that with my own family i mean i've had to yeah. go and do my own work um i understand too well how that feels and as a mother i want to talk to you about that because i don't know if you're a mother now are you a parent I now? Am. yeah so i've got my new to yeah. touch this now because you, i've been through miscarriage when you've been through sexual abuse you said something earlier that your parents were abused themselves yes so it was normalized it was normal yes it's what they knew and yes. then they had people in the house that shouldn't even be there yeah and, and what a lot of people don't understand is that kids are more often sexually abused by people they know absolutely absolutely and, and i want to say that because some people just don't get that yeah. um you have to be so careful not overprotective not stupid but you have to be vigilant and observant about who you allow into your space with your children absolutely. talk to me about how you are as a mother now how do you try to have that balance right with your own child or children and being conscious of what happened to you as a child and understanding that you know in the reality some of the person that came into your household should not be there how do you strike that balance with your child without um smothering them it's naturally happened when i had him i saw for the first time unconditional love and it changed me it changed everything inside of me i suddenly knew all i learned all the so the shamanic work i'd done before i still brought in a toxic partner my partner was toxic but when i had this child it's like okay i've got to make a difference i've got to make a change i every time i looked in his eyes i left my partner when he was two because i knew it was just not healthy not good at all so i left six months after i left him my half brother sexually assaulted me in my parents home and so my son was here and so um i just go yeah. um yeah, we can so, wait a moment because i'm feeling i'm also feeling a bit emotional because just listening to it it's you know people say and this is my view on it you can heal from it but it doesn't mean that it does not bring you emotions when it comes back absolutely, right? absolutely. And it doesn't mean that you haven't healed it just means that it is something that you still remember because you heal doesn't mean you forget it no and because it took me a year to press charges against him and i did because he was a taxi driver and he was mentally ill so as far as he was concerned women were coming on to him and there was lots of things the family knew because he was doing some stuff in front of them they just never knew that he was he would do it to me but i told my mum, i told everybody when it happened um and in a year i took press charges and then all hell broke loose because the family the, th the thing for them was the easiest thing was for me to be quiet and stop the charges and for a time i stood alone and there was one night i put my son to bed and um the my my half brother's um wife was very had mental issues as well and um she set up a campaign against me so i had threats i had phone calls and uh there was an anonymous phone call to social services as well and so i did a letter I through from social, a letter through from social services and it because it came on the weekend i couldn't ring anyone mm -hmm. and um my family had fallen apart because they were afraid and she was also attacking them verbally as well mm -hmm. um and so i was on my own this one night i put my son to bed and i shook with fear but also in that terror mm. i would look in my son's eyes and i knew i wouldn't stop i lost everyone for a period of time they all fell apart i had friends who came in mm. i lost everyone and so but i looked into his eyes and i thought i'm going to do this and also because it happened my mum opened up to me about her abuse she told no one before and she, she said to me i know how you feel she said because it happened to me from the age of 13 i was abused by my grandfather mm. and then and then and then and she told me she told me no one. it's a generational thing and, and I, when she told exactly but when she told me i knew i had to finish the line because i saw i saw that it was there and i thought no i am not stopping and i didn't stop i i stood against it all alone but I looked into this eyes of pure love of this child 
this child has never seen this. This child is never having people around him like that. And I can, you can sense when people are manipulative, or whatever, you can sense they're not around him. Never. Sally, I just want to stand and because I, I see other advocates for sexual abuse. I don't know enough that I, I mean, I know a few people, but you know, very often this person's on television and you know, in the newspaper, yeah. I just want to send a sister love across the, the screen to you because when I stepped out about my abuse, I was scared. Yeah. I remember yeah. I didn't tell anybody for years. Sally's 30 something years. I carried that secret. Yeah. yeah. I got married. I was afraid to tell my ex-husband at the beginning. Yeah. I didn't tell my mom because I was afraid of what she would do. Yeah. It happened in Jamaica, which made me a little bit more scared. So it is seen and not heard. You don't wash your linen and it is always going to be your fault. You were either yes. too short of a shorts. You're, you're showing too much cleavage. You were something. You were, ch- I was a child. Yeah. But yeah. It was my fault. And yes. I don't know if it happened to you, but when this happens to you and it happens more than once, you learn three. Yeah, it does. Trust no one, become mute and it's your fault. Absolutely. There was, there have been so many times in the past that, that things had really bad things had happened. And I just, I, but I couldn't connect the dots until I found the family history because I've been impregnated with this message that men can do what they want yes. and men are up there and all down there. And that's just because uh, as a ch- she said, as a baby, she used me as a human shield against a guy that was abusing, you know, assaulting her in her house, abusing her, mauling her in the home. So from a babe, I've absorbed this. And honestly, I have this, I've just said men can do what they want. Men can do what they want. It was just there. And so there have been so, so many things. And also her response to things was not as it should be and not by my dad. But I understand now why. Exactly. So so hear me when I say to you, and I'm sure you've done the forgiveness work with your parents. Is yes. They were serving you as a parent the yes. best way they knew how. Absolutely. The way Absolutely. they were taught. And I was talking about parenting the other day, only yesterday actually, to someone, um, another friend of mine who's a therapist. And I said to her, I parented badly with my daughter at the start for many years because I did not know any better. Yeah. That is how I was parented. And the moment I realized it was not the best way, as a matter of fact, my daughter helped me to show me, mommy, this is not, this is not okay. This is not the best way to parent. I tried to change. I changed because um, I realized. And so with my son, I tried to parent differently. And so sometimes she gets really angry because she's saying, well, he gets away with that. And you didn't treat me that way. And she gets upset. And I'm saying to her, but I know I'm awakened. Yeah, absolutely. I know my- I'm empowered. I know see yeah. the light. Yeah. My mum passed away in December and we did lots of talk before she passed as well. And my father, my, my half brother distanced himself from the family. He, he had nothing to do with mum or anything afterwards. And so there was lots of healing to do with that. And it brought it up as well. And for a while it surrounded me because we were talking about him at the funeral. His name was mentioned. People don't know. So he's treated with respect, you know? So there was, it was that, but, um, for me, did that hurt? What hurt more afterwards was that some relatives were still in contact with him and he started lying about mum to them on the phone and they've shut the door to him. He's mentally ill, mm. so there's no, you know, um, but in a lot of ways it seemed to cleanse and clear me. Me and mum talked a lot about it before, um, as she was passing. Um, there was, and it, but for a while I just, there was like an ending that was needed. It was because when mum passed, I seemed to put this cloak of grieving on, you yeah. know? And part of that grieving was this, this life history that we shared, mm. you know, there, there is, my siblings don't know. It was, it was me that she talked to about the depth of what had happened to her and by whom. And it's, it's a very weird and sad commonality, but you had commonality. Exactly. And in a lot of ways it drew us together and in a lot of ways it, it held us apart for a while as well, because there was that, we were both hurting she wasn't able to she would speak sometimes but she wasn't able to speak fully mm-hmm. and so um there was a time that it, it was it was just tough and also because they all pulled away um they all came back afterwards but i had to forgive every member of the family because they said vile things to me because they were being loaded and they were afraid it was like it just seemed like the easiest thing for sally to shut up let me ask you know, this, yeah but 
the one thing, something about having my child and looking in his eyes changed me. That's when I started to write, was when, because, when I left my partner, when this happened, because I parented from the heart, completely different from people around me. But the more I wrote, the more it grew, the more it gave solidity. I was getting published for my writing. Yes. But it's, it's something about that having him opened my heart. And then the tools I'd learned with the shamanic where it came in. And it was like, and now you process because you've got nowhere else to go. And so I have healed layer after layer after layer after layer. And so this is why I do the work I do. Mm. Because, yes, I can still feel it like we just talked about now. Because... But that past doesn't dictate. It, it, it's it's given me depth. It's given me wisdom. It's given me understanding. It's 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 given me so much. But it isn't a cloak that hides me. It's something that gives to me now. It gives me that compassion when someone comes to my door. It gives me that knowledge that I can handle situations because yeah. because they're not hiding. None of my past is hiding. Mm-hmm. I chose to look at it and I chose to heal it. Yes. Because that's the only way I don't pass it on. I, I want to thank you. I just, I just love that. And I just say, I heard you say that, that was just such a, it took such a heroic effort. I think it took heroic self-love for yeah. your son. Um, I think it was more for him. He was your why. And he was, it's exactly. Adamant that I have been in pain for such a long time. Yeah. I'm going to have this happen to my son, my innocent, pure son that yes. came to the world. And whilst you cannot determine and you cannot prevent it in totality from happening, what you can do is equip him and, and, and skill him up so that this, if he were to come, I just, I just come across as it wouldn't happen to him. I just wrote my first set of children's books. And they're not published yet. One for both, one for, one for girl, yeah. All around sexual abuse. And it's going to be able to be read from as young as three years old because it's not in your face like that. It is for parents to read it and then interpret it for children. And when I wrote the girls one, I realized that, no, we need to have the boys one. So I'm just yeah. about to publish them in the next couple of months. Um, they had just been illustrated. But I thought it was important for somebody who, um, because so often we focus on the adults. Yes. And we leave off the kids. And I realized that my son is eight and I have to be talking to him about colorism and racism and sexual abuse because he lives in this world. And this can be a cruel place. And so we have to educate them early. And so I thought, what better way to do it than a bedtime story? And mine is about the ballerina. Literally, this is my, I'm a ballerina. This is my tutu and these are my, you know, it's really, I just use a ballerina because I really thought that would be relatable to most little girls, right? Absolutely. And then, and then I wanted it to be not something that it, it had to be children's language. It had to be yeah. in a way that children, so that's going to come out real soon. And with the boys, it's similar. Just choose a sport and focus on that. And, and, and in it, I talk about even the teachers, you know, because you cannot always even trust your teachers. So you need to find exactly. those safe people and, and stop. And so I just want to honor you. I heard you mention you forgive so many people. Mm-hmm. But I want to ask you, did you forgive you? That was the final one with my mum. Was the understanding I needed to forgive myself because... Um, I've come still with a framework that I take responsibility for other people's actions. I was feeling guilty. I should have. I should have done this. I should have done that. And I realized I was still carrying that mantle. So this has been the final one for me to do exactly that. Wow. You know, I, you know, it was, I was still living in a framework of I should have. I should have. No, he shouldn't have. Yes. It's as simple as that. It's simple as meant that. Meant to be, exactly. And especially when it's adults, I just think, especially when it's adults and it's children, you're meant to be the adult. I am yeah. a child. You are meant to protect me. Yeah. And when you pass, I believe that everybody who sexually abused somebody else has got mental issues. I really yes. think that. Because I think it takes a level of losing your mental capacity to be able to look at an innocent child who has done you nothing and to cross those boundaries, but then to to want it to be a secret and to think, okay, you have something within you has been broken. Yes. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And the one thing that I am passionate about with him and with others is instinct, the trust instinct, because that I realized mine got numbed because of what I was around. So I got desensitized. Yeah. So the, it, the toxic, the extreme people around me when I was young, that's normal. But that's desensitization because it's not. So inside us, we've got that gut feeling, that barometer that you trust more than someone's words, someone's uh, position in life and so i i very clear with my son i've never i've never pushed anything on him to it's like well, how does that feel to you you know and to keep that instinct because as adults we can strip our kids oh no you shouldn't you shouldn't not you know you must kiss whoever they're a relative well actually if a child doesn't feel like it don't I'm because you, that. you're because pushing on Yes, I'm glad you said that because when I grew up, one of the things that I hated doing and I warned my children about it very early on is never sit on anybody's lap. Come and sit exactly. on granddad's lap. Come and, no, do not do it. And yeah. I teach my kids, more so my son, because my daughter, it was different. I wasn't as sensitized um, to some of the things around me or I pushed mine to the back so I just didn't want to deal with it. And so with my son, I, I kiss him on the cheek. And I said, if mommy and your sister can kiss you on the cheek, everybody else must kiss you so when my son comes to kiss me now he will not kiss me on my lips it's right on my cheek because yeah it's important to teach children those little things and those are the little unwritten rules and the little ways they're sliding like a slider into your children's lives and i've done it's interesting i've done exactly the same with kisses while he kisses me on the cheek I've done the same thing um, because as kids, we come in with pure, pure energy. So we can sense, we can feel, but then it's what happens to us that separates us from that feeling. I've regained it with the healing. So I you know, you can feel people's energy. So and I'm willing to just trust it more and more and more, but those kids, they naturally have it. They have to just be allowed to honor it yes. and just not have it, not have it hampered in any way or clamped down by conforming. Wow. You must do X, Y, Z. Wow. Rachel, I, I, mean, I'm, I mean, sorry, Sally, I was just interviewing Rachel just now. Sally, I'm just so excited about this. And it's, it's not even something you should be excited about, but I'm excited about the fact that you are able to overcome these obstacles. You are able to say, I'm not going to take this BS. This is BS and I'm not going to stand for it. Let me yeah. tell us what kind of work you do right now. What are you into? You're a coach and you're, you know, you're into all of that. You're writing. I want to, I want to encourage you to write a children's story because I think you'd be so good at it because Thank you. we need more people like us to be the voices for those who are not, who are still mute. There are some Absolutely. who are still mute and we're unmuted. And as we wind down this interview, I want you to tell us how, what you do. How can we get in touch with you? Although the notes are going to be here, I want to hear how people who watch this who feel a sense of, oh my God, I want to talk to her, or oh my God, I want to work with her. What are you doing these days? I'm doing, I've just self-published the, the book, which is What's Processing it? the Mask is the first thing um, and that i oh i talk through how to process yeah exactly a mask we put on a mask where everything is okay everything is uh we hide behind it and it's about removing the mask the mask it's about processing because i learned how to process so i honestly go talk through my journey of going deep into something and then being able to come beyond it and so it's a walk through of processing of healing of self-healing mm -hmm. that's my book the coaching and the writing i'm writing articles um i've set up a, a, a private facebook group called wise woman guide mm -hmm. because i'm supporting women in coming back to that wisdom within which is exactly the same thing listening to your voice listening to this energy mm -hmm. listening to the inner wisdom so mm -hmm. encouraging people yes. recently i did a post just about what we're talking about the the, the sexual the abuse and um I'd done some photo shoots for a charity magazine mm -hmm. and they were in the water with just a white sheet. Did it last year, but I, what I put it under was there's a story behind every picture. And so I showed them that the cleansing of, and I talked them through, do you know, they met women that contacted me after I put that up and exactly the same thing, silence, blame. They mm -hmm. felt to blame. There are too many women silent. So I'm speaking more and more. My, most of my life I've hidden because I needed to. So I've had this invisibility cloak, which is again what you do when you're in top, when you're in extreme situations, you hide. 
now this year, since my mum's passed as well, I'm speaking more and more. My work is growing. I'm getting more articles put out there. Um, I'm doing more talks yesterday on this kind of thing at the moment because of COVID. But I'm being more and more open about what's happened because it's now finally my past. Wow. And that it's not walking with me. So I can be there for women. So I've got my website which is the www.sallysaint.co.uk. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. I coach women and I do it intuitively. It's, um, I call it like this spiritual space is what I hold because I understand no matter what, who comes through the door, they've got depth they've never even touched. And so it's my, it's my um, vision for each person when they come is that they access that depth and realize how phenomenal they are, no matter what has happened to them. They are divine, they are divine. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Sally, for being here. It is so amazing. All the notes are going to be in the foot of the actual podcast. And listen to me, guys. She's talking about unmasking, unmasking all of that stuff that we carry around every day. And so I just want to honor you for being such a champion, literally, because you're going to help so many women and men, little boys and girls. And I'm so glad you stopped by with us today. Thank you so thank much. You. And until next time, I will see you soon. And thank you much, Sally. Take care. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. having me. Thank you for being here. And guys, that is the Purpose Walk podcast brought to you by Dr. Ava Brown. I am. If you are touched by any of these stories, please contact myself or Sally. The notes are below. And remember that you need to understand that sexual abuse is not okay, but you can get over on the other side. Both of us are here as examples, doing great work, writing books, articles, working with people all over the globe. And so you can thrive too. This was brought to you by the Manco Girl, uh, Simply Natural and uh, truly royal threads and I am so glad that they were able to sponsor us for this and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, take care.